So okay, um, here is some background. So suppose we have some data from uh, various sources, and our high-level goal here is we would like to find a succinct representation of all those data. So here is some example. We would like to find a small probabilistic model that fits our data. Uh, we would like to do clustering. Uh, we would like to do uh, dimensionality reduction. And another example here is we would like to encode our data with smaller size, which is uh, the one we would like to focus in this talk. So here is the um, dictionary learning problem. So suppose we have V vector, V1 to Vn from d-dimensional Euclidean space. And we also have two, we, and we also have two parameter, M and K. Then your task here is to find M vector in this d-dimensional Euclid Euclidean space, such that each vector Vi from our input can be represented as the linear combination of at most k of them. So um, in order to make the problem interesting, uh, we would like to assume that m is much smaller than n and k is much smaller than d. And here is basically the same thing. We just uh, put this into a matrix formulation. So we have input matrix V and then we would like to decompose it into AX such that uh, the columns in X has the sparsity at most k. And here we call A to be the dictionary matrix. So if we view this as an encoding problem, originally we need N D real number to represent our input. But now if we have this decomposition, we need M D plus N K real number to represent this um, to represent our input data. So here are some previous results. Um, we can use uh, KSVD algorithm, uh, which has uh, no guarantee on the, on the problem because this is heuristic algorithm. And then there are some other works, but um, they either make some assumption on the uh, matrix A, the dictionary matrix A. They assume that A is incoherent, um, or they assume that X is from a generative model which means that um, um, under some probabilis probabilistic model, um, um, X is generated. Then the question we would like to ask here is, can we solve the problem without any assumption on A and X? Uh, the answer is no, because this is NP hard. Then the next question here is, can we solve the problem without any assumption on A and X? If we are allowed to relax M and K, and our work is going to explain this question. So here is our main result. So again, we have a input matrix V, and we would like to uh, decompose it into A and X. And our algorithm return the matrix A and X such that the number of columns in, in, in the matrix A is mk squared as opposed to m. And also, we, we also have the guarantee that each column of x has the sparsity k squared as opposed to k. And of course, we, um, we also have the guarantee that um, the, error, the error between our input matrix V and our decomposition cannot be too far away from the optimal error. So here is the key idea. So in our algorithm, each iteration we generate one vector, and then we put this vector into our dictionary. So now uh, let me introduce one other problem to you. We call it threshold correlation problem. So basically this problem is you are given V vector, uh, N vector, and also a real number, called, we call it threshold tau. And then we would like to find out a vector such that this expression is maximized. So actually, you can view this problem as the generalization of top eigenvector problem. Because 
if you set this tau, this threshold to be zero, so you are basically trying to find out the top eigenvector. And here is a more, uh, this picture shows that uh, uh, how this problem is actually trying to compute. Then, here is the guarantee we, 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 we observe. If we can solve this threshold correlation problem optimally, then we get a very good approximation on the dictionary problem. The reason why is that, again, in each iteration, we are trying to find out one vector and put it into the dictionary. And then uh, how to find this vector is by, the, uh, by this threshold correlation problem. And then after each step, we update our input vector recursively and then um, make a loop. But here is the catch. The problem is this threshold with correlation problem is still hard under the exponential time hypothesis. So uh, let's go back to our approach. Uh, we, 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 still want to find out, we still want to solve this threshold correlation problem. Then the solution here is we can approximate it. So more precisely, we can, um, we can design a polynomial time algorithm such that we return a vector C prime with the following guarantee. So you can see that um, there are some relaxation on the threshold, uh, tau square as opposed to tau. And we also have the approximation ratio at our um, objective value, which is tau squared divided by 32. So uh, once we solve this problem, once we plug in uh, this approximation algorithm into our main algorithm, then we can uh, get our main result. So here is um, a small extension that could also apply to our to our problem. If we can assume that uh, some of our input vector are outlier, so which means that we should ignore them, our algorithm still work on this setting. And here are some open, open questions we would like to uh, uh, introduce here. Can we um, do, do better than this additive error result? Can we find a lower bound hardness result that this uh, additive error is necessary. And the next one is, uh, as I mentioned before, we introduced this threshold correlation problem. So if we can improve this threshold correlation problem, can, is, there a, um, is there a better algorithm to find, uh, to solve this, to, or to approximate this threshold correlation problem and thank you. So basically, we just uh, do the uh, a greedy algorithm. We just um, basically, um, how we return this C prime is basically one of this YI. And then we just check everyone and everything. 